Hey everybody, I'm so glad we have this time together today as we continue our series, Five Habits of Healthy Christians. If you're joining us for the very first time today, I'm thrilled that you're here. I hope it won't be your last time. I hope you find a place here and, be, and are blessed in your time with us. If we haven't met before, my name is Johnny and I serve as the pastor here at Hutto Discovery United Methodist Church. And we chose to do this series, we're in week four now, of Five Habits of Healthy Christians because... It uh, seemed like around this time, maybe a month or so, uh, last year in 2020, we were forced out of some really good habits, uh, maybe even forced out of some really bad habits, which is good. Uh, maybe people in their life were feeling a sense of momentum. It was the beginning of the year, and we were moving towards some goals, and then all of a sudden it felt like all of that came crashing down. The rug was kind of torn out from underneath us. Uh, and now we were just kind of left uh, trying to figure out what normal looks like uh, in the midst of a global pandemic. And here we are at the beginning of 2021. I mean, I know it's not the beginning, beginning, but we're still in the beginning of, of the year. Here we are at the beginning of the year, and it's not over yet. And uh, we could choose to do one of two things. We could either just wait around until that day, whatever normal is, arrives, or we can choose today uh, to begin developing habits and practices that will make us healthy and whole now, that will draw us closer to God now. In fact, not even settling for normal, but rather moving towards something that's extraordinary. Because our formation, we've said this from the very beginning, we've said it every week, our formation, who we are becoming, is determined by the habits that we have. The output of our life is determined by the input. We get, these from, uh, we get that truth from Jesus, his words when he says, a good person brings good out of the good stored up in them. So if we want the output of our life to be healthy, to be whole, to be good, then those are the types of things we have to input into our life. The way to put it is if we want to live the spiritually fruitful life, the Christ-centered life, if we want to be drawn towards God's will and to practice God's will here, here on earth, it's not going to happen by accident. We're not going to stumble upon it. It's also not going to happen simply because we decide to call ourselves Christian. You can be, you know, by title uh, a Christian. You can be by affiliation a Christian, but in no way live a life that has the marks of Christ on it. If we want to live the spiritually fruitful and Christ-centered life, then it's going to happen because we decide to intentionally and consistently walk with Christ. That's why Jesus said in John chapter 15 that I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who abide in me, who stay with me, who are attached to me, who are connected to me, who walk with me, who follow with me, who are near to me, they will bear much fruit. And that God is glorified in this, that you would bear fruit and be Christ's disciples. Another, another way to put this, a uh, way to kind of help us kind of get handles on this idea of becoming, right? Uh, what we've talked about is the transformation that takes place in our heart and then ultimately in our life is truly the work of the Holy Spirit. That our will, our willpower is not powerful enough to transform our life, but rather it is our cooperation with the Spirit. To use other biblical language, we are not the potter. We are the clay. And the practices that we develop that draw us near to Christ, the ones that we're talking about in this series, help keep us malleable. Because when clay gets hardened, then it gets brittle right? And it just breaks. It cannot be shaped. It cannot be formed. So when we're drawing nearer to Christ, we're keeping ourselves malleable so that we can be formed by the Spirit. And that's the goal is transformation, the transformed life. The goal is not busyness. The goal is not trying to earn God's love because you can't. You already got it. It's about intentionally cultivating an authentic life in Christ. So, We've talked about a few different habits. Today's habit that we're going to talk about is mission and service. We're going to talk about what it means to live a life of mission and service. And there, there's um, the thing in the church is that, that service and mission, outreach, serving others is kind of a hallmark of the church. It's kind of what the church is known for at best, right? Hopefully that's what the church is kind of known for. It's kind of what the visible part, the visible work of the church is, but this idea of service and a life of service, just an outpouring of constant service, became very real to me in one of the most simple and pro profound 
Acts. A former pastor of mine, when I started serving at this church, before I was serving as a pastor even myself, um, this, he served at this church for quite a long time. And, and as the story goes, is that when he first arrived at that church, uh, he pulled up, and it was a midweek, it wasn't on a Sunday, it was midweek, he pulled up into the parking lot, and he parked, and he saw there, there was a sign that said, reserved for pastor. It was a specific reserved pastor parking spot right there at the front, right near the, uh, the entrance of the church. And, and I've seen that at many churches myself. But as the story goes, that his first order of business when he showed up at this church was to have that sign removed. And for 20 plus years of him serving that church, he parked in the furthest spot available in the parking lot. He wanted to park as far away as possible to leave every possible close spot for anybody who would be coming to church on Sunday. For him, it was a simple act of service that that did serve other people, but it transformed his heart. It was an outpouring of who he was and who he wanted to be. And that very story transforms something in me. That we often think of serving and mission in, in, in the church world as, as maybe an overwhelming or, or one-time event. Think like mission trips. Sometimes it's traveling to other places. It's tra- traveling to the other side of the globe. These big one-time events where you're meeting needs, right? That's kind of what we think. And it is those things. Serving and mission are those things. We also sometimes tend to think of serving and mission as, as happening, happening someplace else, somewhere else. But it was this simple act, this simple story, that is not unique to him. I know many pastors have probably done this uh, throughout the ages. But it was this simple act, me being confronted with a true servant's heart, that revealed to me that serving in its very essence is simply putting Jesus' love into practice. That's what serving is. And serving can happen anywhere. It can happen in your home. It can happen in your church. It can happen in your community, in your neighborhood. It can happen on the other side of the world. But serving is putting Jesus' love into practice. It's the loving your neighbor uh, as uh, as part of the the great commandments that Jesus talks about. Loving God and then loving your neighbor, right? Right? Uh, The loving your neighbor part is that serving part, the outpouring of Jesus' love in our life. When he says love your neighbor as yourself, he's not talking about simply a feeling, not just feeling love for your neighbor, but actually showing love, even if you don't feel love for your neighbor. Serving, putting Jesus' love into practice is sacrificial. We, in a sense, relinquish something whether that's time or, or money or resources or things, right? We relinquish something on behalf of something else. We leverage what we have for the betterment of someone else. It's sacrificial. Putting Jesus' love into practice becomes, the serving becomes a condition of the heart. It becomes, if we practice it enough, something that we don't necessarily have to think about. It becomes a lifestyle. It becomes something we do always. It's just a part of who we are. See, with consistent practice, serving becomes integrated into our whole sense of self, our whole identity. It's a permanent part of who we are. We don't even think about it anymore before we are just reaching out anytime we can to serve others. And most importantly, the reason we serve is that it is in serving that we become most like Christ. If serving is putting Jesus' love into action, then it's in participating in that, in serving that we become most like Christ. It is in serving that we become most like who we were intended to be. See, prevalent throughout the Bible, through all of our scriptures, are stories and, and words of wisdom that reveal this sort of essential truth that our lives, our whole being, are interwoven together with one another and with God and that we discover ourselves fully in giving ourselves to others. We discover our true identity in Christ by serving. Paul says it this way in the letter to the Romans chapter 14 when he says, we do not live to ourselves and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord and if we die, we die 
to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. Jesus' words in Matthew chapter 20 when he says, Whoever wants to be great among you must become a servant. Just as the Son of Man or the Son of God, or you know, read Jesus there, just as Jesus, the Son of God, did not come to be served but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. He also says this from Mark chapter 8, Those who want to save their life will lose it. But those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. He also says this, Matthew 25, Truly I tell you that whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Serving others does not merely involve helpful activities that make a difference in people's life. It's not simply the things that we do. It's not a one-time event. That Christ-like service helps us become the person God created us to be. It fulfills God's hope and will for our lives. When we put Jesus' love into practice, we become more like Christ. And when we do that collectively, that's like at an individual level, right? It's a habit, a practice that we develop at an individual level. But when you have a community of people that endeavor to to practice Christ's love in their everyday life, wherever they are, when you have a community of people, you might even call it a church, when you have a gathering of people who have all committed their lives to serving others as Christ has served, then you have the most faithful witness that we could possibly have. A church is at its best when it is serving its community. You often hear one of the metrics that, um, that leaders talk about in their churches as, as a way to grade whether or not your church is truly living out the gospel is if your church were to disappear tomorrow from your community, would it be missed? Would it be missed? Is it making a difference where it is planted? Serving is the most faithful witness of the church it's in serving others that we bear witness to the reality of the kingdom of god that is with us now your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven we pray that each and every week we bear witness to that reality when we are serving others we bear witness to the truth of jesus's message of salvation that fullness of life that wholeness is discovered in the giving and not in the taking. That abundance is found in loving rather than fearing. And that happiness comes in opening ourselves up rather than closing ourselves off. So, if living a life closer to Christ and being transformed into the likeness of Christ isn't enough, If you want more, think about it this way. Do you want to tear down the walls of fear and bitterness and suspicion toward others? However you define others, whoever the other is in your life, whether it's somebody across the political aisle or, you know, you want to tear down those walls? Serve them. You want to grow closer to those you feel so separated from? Serve them. You want to expand your heart to hold all of the love of Christ and serve. Now, I said that, you know, a a metric that is often touted is uh, will a church be missed if it were to up and disappear tomorrow? Would the community miss it? Would it be noticed that it was not here anymore? And I I love the fact that I serve a church that I can wholeheartedly, fully, confidently say, yes, this community would miss this church greatly. Not only those of us that would call this church home would we miss it, of course we would, but people that don't even call this church home, they would miss it too. Now, I I could go on and we could spend hours celebrating each and every way that all of you serve 
all of you give your lives, all of you practice the love of Christ. But we don't have time for all of that. So, at the risk of leaving people out, which I do not mean to do, because this is a, in no way a comprehensive list, here are some of the ways that you serve, that you have served and you continue to serve. Pre-COVID, pre-pandemic, when we were still meeting regularly at the church, we had people that would greet every Sunday morning that would sit here and wait for people to show up. It seems like one of those super simple things to do, but how critical it is, not only to the health of the church, but to sharing God's love in a real tangible way. In fact, I would say the greeters uh, have one of the most important roles that we have in the entire church because people these days, it's kind of difficult to show up to church for the first time. And, and we believe that when you're here in the presence of other people and other people seeking God, seeking the truth, when you're here and we get to sing together and we, we share in a children's time together, we do all those things together, we learn, we, we become a, a part of one another and in the presence of God. We hear about the gospel and the love of God. And the greeters are the first people that, 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 that new folks will interact with. You know, it's hard enough to come into a church because you can't see what's on the inside. Many people have preconceived notions about what the church is and uh, maybe are afraid to go into the church. And when they work up that courage to step out in faith and show up on a Sunday, the greeters are the front line. And a smiling face a warm welcome does so much to prepare the heart to receive the good news. In fact, it is the good news in practice, that hospitality of God in practice. We have people that not only serve as greeters, but serve in the choir, that serve in the band. People that help lead worship in a way that only because they, they want to. They give from their heart. They have something to give and they want to help lead everybody in a time of praise and thanksgiving. We have people that are part of a committee called the trustees that help care for the grounds of the church. They're not staff. Uh, they're not employed in any way here. But they care so much about the facilities, the buildings that we have, the sacred spaces, that they come and they take care of that. We have people who serve our, our children and our youth on Sunday mornings that help teach them. What a, what a great way to serve, especially this community that is growing and it's growing young. Young families are coming and living here and so they need a place for their children to be raised in the truth of God, to know the goodness of God and that God loves them from a very young age so that we might raise them in that truth. We have people that volunteer their time to serve the children and the youth of this community. So much of that has seemed to kind of go away um, a little bit. I mean, not all of it, but to some extent, you know, in the pandemic, it's a little less visible now. But we have people crawling out of the woodwork to serve even in this era. I mean, at the very beginning of the pandemic, when we were scrambling, how are we ever going to continue, uh, you know, what we do on Sunday mornings and the other parts of, of, our, of, our, um, of our church life together? How are we going to do this? And people came out and said, hey, I'll help. You know, I'll do a devotion on Thursday. You know, we'll sing songs on Tuesday or on Friday. I can do a devotion on Wednesday or, or Monday. Trying to get stuff for Sunday morning. This video right here that you're watching set up. I mean, it, it was a monumental task and we had people crawling out to, to, to help. In fact, we had two guys in particular who jumped out with not only their very expensive equipment, but hours and hours and hours of their time to help us uh, be able to do this in a way that looks clean and professional and, and audible and so that it is actually effective. We had Stephen who comes and plays for us um, and helps us record and prepares songs for us each week. And, and today, after the two guys that have been instrumental in helping us get online on Sunday mornings, uh, while they're back at school uh, now, my wife, uh, who uh, has been uh, the camera person now, a grade A camera woman who helps keep everything running while I stand in front of this camera. We have an ad council, servants who volunteer their time to help lead this church. We have a care team, uh, wonderful, beautiful souls who think about how we can best reach out and care for the church in this time when we can't necessarily be together in person, especially for pastoral care. They've been innovative and creative in the ways in which we reach out to care for people. And even beyond the walls of this church, in so many ways, you as a church serve. When there was hurricanes, we, we rallied and we uh, had health kits and cleaning kits 
uh, and supplies donated so that we can create so many of those to send off for those that were going to be on the front lines of the relief during the hurricane. When Orange Santa rose up and it was like we have kids and we have families who cannot celebrate Christmas the way we believe Christmas should be celebrated. And you came. In an outpouring of your heart, you brought food and you brought toys. And then constantly throughout the year, as, as numbers of, of families that, uh, that come to the food pantry in our community rise week after week after week because of the, the stressors put on their finances and on their household due to the pandemic. As demand has risen, you have been there to help meet that demand with much supply of food. Week after week, we have donations filling our boxes that need to go. Hundreds of pounds of food to be donated for those that need it. It's true, serving in this time during the pandemic has uh, looked different and a little less hands-on than what we would normally assume about serving, but you have served nonetheless. And we hope that as this year goes on, as 2021 continues on, and as the, you know, the climate changes and as the pandemic slowly fades into the rear view, hopefully sooner rather than later, we might resume some of those more normal or more familiar ways of serving. But not even the ones that we're more familiar with. We're hope, we hope, and we have in the works and the plan some really exciting ideas to serve our community, to make a difference in our world, to affect change, not only in our homes, but in our neighborhoods and around the world. And I can't wait to share them all with you so that you can get excited about them and you can get involved as well. But with that being said, if you have an idea, whether it's for today or for in the days to come, if an area of your world where you live and you move, you see a need out there that is not being met, or at least not being met adequately, if you see an area of need in our community, we would love to know about it. I'm going to invite you to email me. Here's my email on the screen right here. Just shoot me an email if you have an idea of how we might best serve our community. Because again, the heart of Christ is serving. It's of giving of ourselves. And that's what the church is here to do, to be a witness to that love in the world. But for now, this is what I want to invite you to do as we close today. That serving out in our communities, uh, out in our world, is, a, is certainly a part of who we are as a church. That servant's heart begins at home, right where you are, where you live, you sleep or you eat, serving begins at home. Choose today and maybe throughout this week to find a new and surprising way to serve your spouse or your children, kids for those of you that are watching, to serve your parents, adults to serve your parents, to serve your neighbors, those that live right next door to you. Think about ways this week you might surprise them with Christ's love, with a tangible, real act of service. And may we, every day, seek to be shaped into the people, of God, the people that God made us to be, a living witness of his love, marked most visibly by our sacrifice and our service. Will you pray with me? Holy God, we thank you so much for the gift of this day, the gift of technology that brings us together, even though we might be physically apart. You join our hearts in this moment. And we lift up our praise and thanksgiving to you, God, as an outpouring of yourself in grace to us so that we might be made whole, God. In the light of that love, may we too be an outpouring of your love. May we be a witness to your grace in the world, not just with our words, but with our actions, so that all may see your kingdom come and your will be done. We pray all these things in the wonderful name of Jesus, the perfect example of your love on this earth, God, in whom we live and move and breathe. We pray all these things in his name. We also pray the words that he taught us by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, it's been a joy to be with you uh, this day. I have a few quick announcements before we close our time together. The first is Easter is coming soon. I know we just got finished with Christmas, but Easter is coming. Man, these few months are like the best in the church. And that all begins on Ash Wednesday coming up in the middle of February. That marks the season of Lent, the season of preparation as we, uh, as we anticipate the resurrection of Jesus. And each Lent we do special things to kind of draw us closer to God, uh, God in this time of preparation. We got a ton of those things for you coming up soon. So stay tuned uh, as we have uh, Bible reading plans throughout the season of Lent. Uh, and our special Lent services that we'll have coming up. So stay tuned for more information on those. The best way to stay tuned and up to date is to be sure that you, are, um, that you like our page on Facebook uh, and that you sign up for our email newsletter. You can do that super simply on our website, howtodiscovery.org. Just scroll down there toward the bottom. You'll see a little thing to input your email. If you're not sure whether or not you're signed up, go and sign up anyways. You won't receive double if you already are. It'll just ensure that you are signed up. So be sure to do that. Uh, As always, drop a like on this video if you haven't already. Hit a comment down below to let us know you're here. And if you're so inclined, share this video uh, on your timeline or you can share it via email or text messages. We love it when you share your church with your friends. If you're looking for ways to give to the church, there are three simple ways. The first is old school. You can write a check, drop it in an envelope, and uh, mail it to the address you see on the screen. You can also do it digitally by going to our website, huddlediscovery.org slash give. There you can set up a one-time gift or a recurring offering. You can do the same on your smartphone through the Give Plus app. You simply download that, follow the instructions to find us, set up a one-time gift or a recurring offering. And for all of you who are in need of prayer or support at this time, if you're looking to take your next step in your faith journey, you're not quite sure what that is. If you're seeking baptism or membership in the church, any of those things, we would love to surround you with prayer and support at this time. Let us know by emailing us at prayers at huddlediscovery.org. Now, friends, as we prepare to go about the rest of our day and our week, receive these words of blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Grace and peace, brothers and sisters. We'll see you next week.